it. Let me, uh, there we go. Now, now you should see it. You see it now? There you go. Now everybody's starting to see it. There we go. All right, let me go back to the notepad real quick. This is, this is the notes that we were taking on, on link building so far. Just based on what you guys have learned in our course. Link building strategies. And we'll just say so far, because there's lots more that we're going to learn about. So number one, live directories. Two, blog commenting. These, the blogging links tend to be, um, can be high quality. Okay, so those could be high quality links that you can get. Um, and then Open Site Explorer, competitor link mining, often high quality. Okay, so that's what makes this one a little bit different tonight. Is OpenSiteExplorer.com? You're going to get lots of really good high quality links, links from really trusted websites, and and I'll show you how that works. Okay, so here we go. Over to OpenSiteExplorer.com. Now. I can type in any web address I want right here, preferably a competitor. So step one, we're going to search a competitor's web address, okay? So I'm going I'm to write the steps down right here. We'll call this steps, okay? Number one, search competitor URL, okay? You guys have, does any of you guys have a competitor that you want to look at? Like somebody you, you see a lot of, preferably not like a Fortune 500 company because it's not as good with that. This is more like a competitor that's related to you, you know, not as big, maybe a medium-sized company that's showing up in Google. Um, if not, I've got one that I can give you an example of, especially because um, there was a time where I was doing a lot of link building for this site right here, um, financialnut.com, right? This is, this is one of my sites. And it's an it's affiliate marketing site where I, I advertise and try to make money off of my advertisements. Anyway, um, it's a financial blog, and I'm competing against other financial blogs for rankings in Google. So as I, as I was looking, there, there were some competitors out there. And here's one of the competitors that I think is just, it's a fabulous blog. I think I've shown it to you guys before. Um, believe it or not, they call this blog budgetsaresexy.com. Yep, that is actually one of my competing blogs on the internet, budgetsaresexy.com. Um, really a pretty popular finance blog. And they get great rankings. Like these guys are very, very popular, okay? They get a lot of search engine rankings. I see them all the time in Google. And when you're doing... Um, keyword research and, and you're in Google a lot, you guys are going to start noticing some of your competitors. Well, I was, I, I wondered why they were ranking so high. And, and I think in part, it's probably because they have a lot of good links from other places. That's one reason why Google would choose to rank them high. So I can take them over to this tool here, Open Site Explorer, and I could do www.budgetsaresexy.com. Okay, and search. You guys all with me? Do you see me search that right there? Yeah? Okay, everybody's with me. All right, let me zoom in. I want you guys to see what I see right now. Now, Open Site Explorer runs a little report for me on this site, okay? They tell me specifically how much domain authority and how much page authority this specific web page has. Now, pop quiz. This is the, this was a webinar we did a while back, but we learned about domain authority and page authority, and it's in that list of videos there on YouTube. What 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 is it? Does anybody remember? What's what's this domain authority and page authority? What does that mean exactly? And I'll show you on that list of videos, it's right here. It's number nine. So if you guys want to get some of the basics on this, a little more than what we do tonight, you're welcome to. Anybody? Domain authority, page authority? Any bells sounding? All of a sudden it goes deathly quiet. I'm going to take that as a sign is probably not. <laughs> 
So go back and watch number nine if you haven't seen it already. But let me give you just kind of a, a, a brief summary of what that means. Domain authority is how much Google trusts the website as a whole. Page authority is how much Google trusts the page that we're looking at. Good, yeah, Catherine, you're right on. It's trust, it's your trust score. We want this score as high as it can possibly go, okay? 100 out of 100 would be insane. In fact, nobody's 100 out of 100. Not even Google itself. Let's, let's look up Google and see if that score is 100. Okay, Google's 100 out of 100. There are 97 out of 100 page authority. I don't even know. That doesn't even make sense. Let's look up like whitehouse.gov. 97, 89. Like these are the most respected and well-trusted domains on the internet. How about apple.com? See that? 100 domain authorities. You guys are never going to be that high. I promise you, ever. You don't need to be. You just need to be around what your competition is. So when I looked here at um, budgetsaresexy.com, it gave me kind of a gauge. They're at a 60 domain authority and a 67 page authority. Like that's really, really, really high. Okay. And you know why they have such a high score, all these companies? It's because they have a lot of links pointing to them. So it's a trust score. If you're, you can always come here to Open Site Explorer and, ch and check your trust. Um, this will this will tell you. So the more links you get, generally speaking, the higher your trust score moves up, right? Does that kind of make sense? That's what the, that's what those metrics mean. Um, page link metrics over here. So this this tells me um, how many links were recently discovered by Open Site Explorer. They, they recently discovered in the last 60 days 391 new links that point to budgets are sexy. And then established links right here, it says there's over oh, close to 15,000 total links that are pointing to their site. That's insane, right? 15,000 total links. Well, guys, that's probably the majority of the reason why they have such high authority. They've got all those links. Well, here's why this tool is so valuable, okay? I can actually see their inbound link report here. Um, if I scroll down here, it's gonna show me from what Open Site Explorer knows. Now, they don't know of every link. They know of a lot of links, but they don't know of every link. I can come down here and I can see all the links that are pointing to this specific site. Now, tell me real quick, why why would that be important to note? Like, what why would we care about the number of links? What like, who cares, right? Yeah, like don't we want those links? I mean, look at it looking at our competition, wouldn't it be nice to have those links? Cuz surely if we had the same links they did or at least a portion of them, that could help push up our authority, right? This is in an effort right now. We're trying to research our competition's link profile, and that's really what Open Site Explorer helps us do. If you can figure out who links to your competition, well, then, then maybe you can go out and get some of those same links, right? Wouldn't that be nice to know? It's kind of like you're spying on the enemy. Think of it that way, right? These guys are my enemy right here. I want to outrank them in Google. I want Google to trust my site more than Google trusts their site. And I get to spy on all the people, all the different websites that are linking to them. So if I see this material... How do, how do I leverage that knowledge now? How do, how do I leverage knowing all of these links that are pointing to my competition? What can I do with this at this point? Because seriously, they've got pages full. I mean, this is a link. This is, a, this is their first page. I can, I'm scrolling all the way to the bottom, and then guess what? I can hit next here. And I get another page full of links. 
and it, we'll look at some of these together. So, on, I mean, I've got there's pages and pages and pages of these links, right? Well, so let's just look at one as an example, okay? Um, I don't know. Here's a website right here. So, this this is the website. Um, FI Fighter. I guess that stands for financial independence. So FIfighter.com. And right here to the right of it, this tells me what the link says. The link is, it goes to budgetsaresexy.com and this is the title of the link. Let's see if this is accurate. I can click on this, this website and it'll bring it up for me. Here I am. And um, I can look for the link somewhere on this page. Now, what does this look like to you guys? What kind of a website is this that we just came over to? Can you tell just based on me scrolling through it? What kind of site is it? There should be some distinguishing fe features here. It's definitely a blog. Yep, Jada, you're right. It's... You can tell that it's kind of an affiliate site because they've got some ads, don't they? See these ads here? So it's it's a blog making money off of um, affiliate advertising, ad, advertising, right? It's just like My Financial Nut, and it's just like this Budgets Are Sexy. It's the same kind of site. But they link somewhere here on this page to Budgets Are Sexy. So I can do this. I can do a Control F. Okay, I just pressed it, and I got this little search bar. And I can type in budgets are, and sure enough, there it is right there. Budgets are sexy. Okay. And if I click on this link, <laughs> whoops, I clicked on the picture. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know what that was. A picture of a toilet. If I click on budgets are sexy, sure enough, what does it do? It takes me back to their website. So interesting, right? So here's the thing you have to ask yourself. Whoops, let's go back to their site. From what you guys can see, why, why are they linking to Budgets or Sexy? Can you answer that question? Why is uh, FIfighter.com linking to them? They're linking to a bunch of sites that I can see. They're not linking to me though. Uh, control, sorry, Doreen, I said control um, F, like find, control F. If you're on a Mac, it's gonna be command F. Yeah, maybe it's a partnership, Jada. Yeah, maybe. You know, maybe, maybe budgets are sexy, maybe their company uh, paid these guys to get a link, right? Could be, maybe some kind of partnership. They link to an awful lot of sites here. And as they, after further investigation, I can tell that these are all finance sites. These are all finance blogs they're linking to. And at the top right here, I know this is kind of small, but what does that say there? You see that word I just highlighted? Here, let me zoom in a little bit. Here we go. You guys can see a little bit better there. What's that say? inspiration right so whoever owns this website right here I, maybe they're an maybe they're a reader of budgets are sexy maybe they just like budgets are sexy they, they've read the blog for a while and as a result they just link over to them which speaks to this didn't we say just a minute ago that number three blogging can create quality links it certainly can because because budgets are sexy has because they've done such a good job on their blogging this this guy whoever owns this fifighter.com fifighter.com they they linked over to him i would guess that there's no partnership in place at all jada i bet this person just likes budgets are sexy and a result they linked over to him so how do I replicate that as, as an owner of a financial site? I, I should, I should of course create good content like budgets are sexy do, does so that I can, 
I can garner those types of links. But what I could do is I could try to reach out to this person, right? Let's see if there's a let's see if there's some contact information here. Yeah, here's a contact page up here at the top. We're doing this on the fly, by the way, guys. I, I didn't look at this before we I wanted to see you kind of or I wanted you guys to see me do this on the fly so you could see how I would think through this. They've got a contact page. I could send them a message and be like, hey, um, notice that you link to Budgets Are Sexy. We're a big fan of that site too. We've been reading it for a while. Um, anyway, and I noticed that you have a lot of financial blogs that are there in your list. Um, I don't know if you've heard of mine. Mine's called financialnut.com and uh, you know, we're, we're kind of in the finance space too. And we're wondering if, uh, if you'd check us out and let us know what you think. And if you like us, maybe you, maybe you can link back to us. I mean, you can openly ask and I'll tell you guys, I've actually done that and had some success where I simply just asked, I was like, look, I, you know, I noticed you had a big long list of financial sites. Would you mind linking to me? And, and a week later, boom, they, they message me back and they say, yeah, sure. I just put you up. Thanks for coming along. You know, some people don't mind linking out. And and you'll notice they have such a long list. I mean, I I would think maybe they don't have some sort of uh, difficult uh, application process to get listed there. It looks like they've got a lot of sites, so maybe they would list me, right? So so I would I would maybe just ask. And and you're right, Jada. All what, like, what's the worst thing that can happen, right? They could tell us no, and oh well, right? At least it was worth a try. But this is a good link, and uh, this is you know these these types of links. This is one of the reasons why budgets are sexy has such a good score in this Open Site Explorer tool, right? Um, let's look at another one. I'll just pull one at random. Here's here's one right here, deardebt.com. And so I know what to search for. Their link is called J Money. Okay? It links to budgets are sexy. This is the anchor text. It's called J Money. Let me click click on Dear Debt. Dear Debt. So so step 1, guys, when you look at these, try to figure out what the site is. This is a this is clearly another blog. It says it here at the top, a blog about breaking up with debt, okay? Deardebt.com. All right, well, I'm just going to do a search for J money and see if I can find it here. J, I don't see it. J money. Nope. See if I can find budgets. Are nope, I don't see budgets are sexy. Although it says the link is here somewhere. Let me go back to Open Site Explorer. Dear Debt, yep, budgets are sexy dot com. Let's try copying J Money and pasting it in my search. Nope, not there. Now let's copy this one. See if it's there. See if we can find it. Nope, not there either. So here's what that could mean. No, and I'll guess why we don't see it here. Um, my, I'm willing to bet. Let's see. I'm willing to bet that at some point in time, because this looks like a comment. This looks like a comment link because the, the anchor text is this guy's name. The, the guy that owns Budgets Are Sexy, his name is Jay Money. So I would be willing to bet somewhere on this site, and I don't, I don't see where it is. Maybe it's, maybe it's in the comments section of one of these blog posts. So like right here, see how it says 17 comments? If I click on comments and scroll down, it'll show me the comments on this specific post. And he might he might be in here somewhere. Nope, not in this one. But anyway, it looks like it's a comment it's a comment link. So 
And, and usually like when somebody's first name is linked, it's, it's a comment. So if it's a blog and it's a first name, it's probably a comment link. So I'm, I'm assuming that's what this link is. So it looks like Budgets Are Sexy probably commented on this blog and left a link. And can we do that? Like, is there, is the, do we need to contact these guys for that kind of link? No way, we could just jump on here and, and, and put a link down, couldn't we? Just comment on a blog post, we've talked about that. That's what that link probably is. Now we could go on and on, right? I mean, I guess we could we could we could go through all of these. Let's just click on another one. Here's here's his name again, Jay Money. Let's click on this one and see if we can find it. This is from Get Rich Slowly, which is a very popular um, financial blog. And let's search for J money and see if we can find it. Nope, it's not showing up. It's probably in the comments. Let's go down to the comments if we can find them. Nope, don't see it. How about budgets are? Nope, don't see it. It's probably just in the comments somewhere. So I'm assuming he probably came down here and linked because if you, again, comment, you can leave your name as a link. That's a link right there. That's a link right there. That's a link right there. And if I'm marketing my site, I could come down here to the very bottom and leave a reply and create my own link. Trevor. And then I could leave my link right here, right? Financialnut.com and then write my comment. That goes into blog comment linking. So I'm seeing so far as I'm looking at his backlink profile, and I know we've just looked at like just a couple of links, you can see different, you know, different uh, blogs so far that he's gotten links from. Here's another one we can, we can click on and see if we can find the link. Um, apparently he's got a link here somewhere on outright.com testimonials. Budgets are sexy, or the, is the link here? Yep, here he is right here. This is the link right there. So he's he's got a testimonial where he got his link. He, apparently, he must use this uh, outright.com um, uh, software, and he wrote them a testimonial and got to put in his link, right? Could we replicate this link very well, guys? Probably not, right? Unless you reached, if, unless you were using this software and got a testimonial that you could give to him, but that's a link back to his site. But he's got thousands of these guys. Like scroll up to the top again. Remember, he's got fifteen thousand links. To to me, I would look at this like, holy cow, I've got a long ways to go. But but you got to be careful. You don't like don't don't judge yourself too harshly. Like this this site right here. If this is my competition. This is formidable competition. This guy's been around for a long time. He's probably making huge money on this site, probably getting tons of traffic. And you can't look at this and compare yourself. I mean, you're a startup. Now, my site, we'll just see where my site stacks up. Financialnut.com. There you go. So here's my domain authority. I'm a 30 out of 100, 41 page authority, and I've got about close to 1200 links. So I've got I've got what like you know less than a tenth of the links that this guy has. So I'm going to use his backlink profile and I'm going to find all the places where he's got links and I'm going to start following suit and I'm going to try to copy his strategy and start getting some of the same types of links, okay? Guys, is that making sense so far? Let me let me stop for just a second. Um Oh, root domains. Yeah, so it says 91 root domains. Root domains just means the number of different domains that I'm getting links from. So if I if I get like 25 links from one blog on just like different pages, that counts as one root domain, but 25 links. So if I constantly like commented on getrichslowly.com and got a bunch of comment links, those might start adding up, but it's only one root domain. Um, because it's the same getrichslowly.org. Does that does that make any sense, Robert? So it's essentially like I've got 91 different websites 
that are linking to me with close to 1,200 links. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, so questions so far, guys. Is this is this making any sense? You see what we're trying to do here. This is this is a way to spy on our competition and figure out where they're getting their links. Because after all, if they outrank us and they're showing up all over Google and you're not, well, check out where they're getting their links. Use Open Site Explorer and and look into why they're getting their links. How are they getting their links? Um, this is a, it's a little more of an advanced link building strategy, okay? Because you got you gotta you gotta be smart about it. You have to be able to identify the type of site. You got to you got to be able to find the link on the site. Let's see if we can find a tougher one here. This is from my link profile. Um, here's one right here. Let's click on this one. Okay. All right, so what? So so let's go through the process here. Let me open up my notepad for you guys for just a second. So step one, let's go back to our steps. Step one is to search competitor URL. Step two is to, um, we'll say identify a link, which we just did. So in this example, we identified this link right here. And, um, we clicked on it okay so we clicked on it to go over to the site to find out about the link let me clear out some of these windows this thing's getting messy there we go okay so we clicked over here what's the next step once we get to this link the next step is to figure out what kind of website is it so once you click on link identify what type of website you you're looking at okay that's the next step so uh what kind of site is this guys what do we know about this as i'm looking at it i'm going to kind of scroll around on the page this is one of my links It's called blogcatalog.com. That much I know. I'm actually not sure where my link is on this thing. It says I have a link somewhere here. Sometimes we can figure out where the link is just by going back here it says financialnut.com, like this is the link. So I'm going to copy that and see if I can find it on the page. Control F. No, nope, it's not. I don't see it here on the page. So it's saying that somewhere here is a link for me, but I don't see it. Yeah, it's some kind of a. So blog catalog, if this doesn't make sense, go to the home page, which is exactly what I'm going to do. Go to the home page here. Blog catalog. Um, it looks like you could submit a blog here. This site looks like it's some sort of a compilation of different blogs somehow. Yeah, it's like a, it looks like a directory of blogs. So it looks like you could come in and submit your site. You could create an account and submit your your blog to this place. So to me, it looks like a some sort of a directory. I don't even remember. I mean, this this is a blog. This is a, a link of mine here, right? But uh, it's counting. It's counting. This is definitely a link. Although I'd I'd sure like to find where my link is here. Yep, I don't know where my link is, but it's here somewhere. Anyway, so what would I learn from this? Then I would I would probably go and submit my blog to this site and see if I could get the same kind of link. That's what I would do. So back to our steps, 
identify the page you're looking at. Number four, this is the important question. Ask how a link was gotten, okay? How did I get a link on this blog catalog page? I, I think I submitted my blog at some point. Yeah, that's probably how it happened. I submitted my blog. On those blog comments ones, how did how did uh how did Jay Money here get a get a link here? Well they they commented. So that that's that's easy. But this is why this strategy is a little more complex to some of my newer clients because you have to you have to use a little bit of common sense. You know, once you find where a competitor is getting a link, you have to identify the link, you have to ask sort of how it was gotten and then and then try to try to get it for yourself. Um, one of the links I came across recently, uh, especially when I've looked at this Budgets Are Sexy, is I found that they got a link in a news article, like from an actual news source. It was from like CNN.com. And when I got there, CNN had done like a little write-up on their blog because of how popular it was. And so I, ident I identified the site real easily because I recognized it. It was like, oh, cool, that's CNN.com. And I was like, wow, they, got, they have an article written about them. And so then when I came to the question in my mind, how can I get a link like this? I don't know. Like, how am I going to get, how am I going to get CNN to write an article about me? I guess I could send them a message and say, Hey, I'm a, I'm a small business and I've got a financial blog. Check it out. And if, if you think it's interesting, maybe you could write something about me, but that's, that's, that seems like kind of a, uh, a far cry. I, I don't think that would probably happen. I, I would will be willing to bet because of how popular Budgets Are Sexy has gotten, um, CNN probably reached out and just did a little write up on them. So, so you can't get, you can't, you, you, you definitely can't get every single link that your competitor has. Like I'm, I'm not going to be able to duplicate a CNN link and that's okay because we're, we're smaller than them. Maybe at some point in the future, if my blog gets big enough, CNN will do a write-up on me, right? But I'm, I'm not big enough yet. So no big deal. I couldn't get that link, but guess what? They have 15,000 other links that I could try to get, and it's all right here in this report. Does that make sense? Okay, so walk me through the steps here, guys. For those of you guys who are here live, tell me first. We've got this Open Site Explorer tool. What's the point? After having learned a little bit about it, and this is very high level, we'll dig into using this in a lot more detail in some of our other webinars, but tell, tell me why we use this. Why is Open Site Explorer valuable to our link building? And how can you use it right now? Yeah, Catherine, you could. Catherine says you can write to CNN and say that you have a certain target audience interested in one of their articles and would CNN be willing to write a summary for your site? Yeah, maybe. Sure. You got to remember like news agencies, they're like they're thirsting for stories. It's not a bad idea if you've got something unique to uh you can always ask, right? Cuz wouldn't that be sweet if I got a if I got a link from CNN, that'd be huge. Obviously Google trusts CNN as a website, right? And if, if Google trusts them and they link to me, that's gonna, that can only help me out. Good. You guys are getting it then. Doreen says, researching how other highly rated sites have links? Absolutely. Well, what did we say earlier, guys? We said spying on the enemy. That's what we're doing. We're spying on the enemy. We're seeing where they get their links, and we're going to do the same thing. Jay, do you say promote your website on the same places that your competition has had success with? Yeah, you bet. You bet. This is a powerful tool, guys. If you can learn how to do some link mining like this, some competitive link mining, or I, I like to call it competitive link spying, you guys spy on the enemy, you can get some really good quality links. I mean, I've already learned tonight about one site within just this tutorial that I'll absolutely go to, and that's that. That was one of those first ones we saw, um, the one where they had a big list of just financial blogs, 25 or 30 of them, and Budgets Are Sexy was in that list. I'd hop on there, and I'd probably submit my site. 
contact the owner and say, hey, check out my site, right? All you can do is ask and it wouldn't hurt. If I, if I got that link, I mean, that link could be tremendously important to my, um, to my standing in Google, right? Yeah, so this is part of Moz. So Moz, Moz.com has lots of tools, search engine or link building tools and stuff. Um, this is part of their tool suite. So you can use it during your free trial. But I was telling you guys earlier, like even if you don't have a trial with Moz right now, I think they let you, if you go to opensiteexplore.com, they let you do a couple of little research requests every day um, for free. It doesn't cost you anything. Yeah, Bill, it's a roadmap to gaining action, actionable information you can use. Yeah, absolutely this is. And yeah, Rick, this is a hundred bucks a month. We we certainly pay for it just because we we use it all the time. My newer internet marketers that are on a budget, I know I know it's it's tough to afford another tool at a hundred bucks a month. So just use a free trial on it. And if you need an extra month, you can always use a different email and get a get a second free trial. But you know, if it's something you're using all the time, seriously, pay a hundred bucks a month for it. I think a lot of times you can do a lot of this research and, 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 you know, use the tool and look at these reports and do it in a solid month and then not have to go back to it for a while. Um, but, uh, anyway, I think it's worth, it's absolutely worth a hundred bucks a month, but I know a lot of you guys are on a budget, so I'm, I certainly don't try to push it on you guys and just full disclosure. I I've got no, I've got no interest in Moz, so I'm, I'm not, benefiting financially if you set up with them it's just it's just what i use because i think it's it's one of the better tools that are out there so i mean we we scratched the surface right like that's one of my competitors i have hundreds of competitors that i see in google all the time this should be this should be a part of your link building strategy you should be doing directories you should do be doing blog commenting you should be creating really great content that will naturally attract links and you should be link mining. You should be looking at your competitor's profile and trying to get those links for yourself. Makes a huge difference. And I have gotten some of the best links that I've ever managed to get for some of my websites through this very process right here. And the other thing that's kind of cool about it is you can monitor your own links. So I feel like it's kind of nice to come in here every once in a while and, and search for my domain name and check out some of the links that I have here, right? I can see how some of my link building strategies are going. Yeah, so you'll notice here, uh, social metrics. I haven't done much social marketing on this site at all. Very rarely. In fact, this this uh, financial nut site, it doesn't have a, it doesn't even have a Facebook page. That's because I did this, you know, years ago, 2008. I think I started this thing. Stopped working on it in about 2011. And now, I mean, it's still generating money for me. It, it sits out there and gets a bunch of traffic and I make advertising dollars off of it. But if I were going to spend time on trying to grow this thing again, I would I would get Facebook set up. I would get Twitter set up and I would try to work some, some social media too. Because I'll bet if we look at... Uh, well, we're running out of time here, but if we look at budgets are sexy.com, yeah, they've got a bunch of social metrics over here. And I know in these presentations we haven't talked about social media a whole lot. Um, we will be soon. We will be soon, but we've we've been so busy working on SEO and link building and optimization and everything else that, that we haven't gotten to it yet. Um, you can, I, I, you know, with, with Moz to cancel, I don't think you call them. I think you do. I think you log into your account and under your settings, like your profile settings, there's a way to cancel it online. I've done it before. So if you need to cancel it, you can either email them or you just do it through your profile settings. Thanks for coming, Frank. It's good to see you. Frank had to check out a little early. Um, yeah, it, it, I don't think it, so Doreen asked, does this site open or does the site open site explorer report if your links are no longer viable? 
Um, I don't think it'll tell you if the links recently dropped off. Um, so there's no report for that, but it, it, you know, this, this thing is run all the time. Like it'll, it's current. So if I got a link a year ago or even a few weeks ago and the link was taken off the person's site, like it would reflect here. It's pretty up to date. It's really pretty up to date. Yeah. So if you haven't used this already, I, I mean, I would recommend you do. Uh, we'll we'll look at this in a little more detail in some of our other Thursday calls. This was really meant for a high level. Hopefully, you guys have some understanding of it now, to where if you if you see the competition on on Google and some some companies that you know you're wondering why they're ranking so well, this this will give you the answer to that question in part. You can see their links. Um, Jada says, is anyone in, into podcasts? I think there's one called Smart Passive Income that talks about social marketing. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I haven't heard of that one, Jada. Um, we used to do a presentation here on, on social media, but we, a weekly one, well, we might have to start that again because social media, I mean, we, you, that should be an integral part of, you know, any of your marketing strategies for sure. Absolutely. Um, spam score is, it's, it's a metric that Moz has come up with that kind of tells you roughly how, you know, how spammy they think your site is or your, your a specific URL is. Um, and they've got, I'll, I'll have to talk more about this, but, but they come up with some flags for each link. Um, and, and they, if it's, if it's got a high spam score, it's not a great link to have. If it's low, it's going to be fine. So this is two out of seventeen, so it's a, it's just fine. We'll have to talk more about that when we've got time. Um, okay, well, guys, I'll 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 let you go. So two out of seventeen is good, by the way. You want a low score. You don't want a high spam score. Um, well, good good meeting. Good to have everybody here. Love the participation. We'll do it next week, Thursday, same time, same place. We may learn more about this Moz tool. If you get a chance to use it between um, here and then, go ahead and do it, and then we'll see you guys all next week. Um, again, thanks for coming. We'll see you guys next time.